Hi everybody, Joshua here with the Heavy Piano YouTube channel. We're going to talk about how to play uh, 13 different versions, or maybe several different versions of the Pokemon theme. And in this case, I'll be using my example of changing the music for a ballet class, but this really applies to like any kind of music you want to play and modify. Uh, in this case, uh, I hope this is useful for, uh, you can kind of take the things I'm talking about here and apply them to any kind of music that might work for ballet. So if you haven't had a chance, check out the video I made. Uh, it's called, uh, um, how many times can I play the Pokemon theme for ballet, which sounds a little inane. Um, but some of the, um, ideas I'm using are helpful for other styles of music or other, excuse me, other songs you might want to use. And disclaimer, this is just the way I play for ballet. Um, uh, some pianists may play a little differently. But we're going to assume the basic rule that everything counts to eight. So either um, it's in eight measures phrases of either two, four, or three, four is kind of like how we're going to be counting music for ballet. So what I will do is I'll take a song that I've kind of arranged already for ballet. So in this case, I have the Pokemon theme. It's in the G minor or E flat major uh, key. I think it's original key. And then what I did is I went to Muse Score and I just selected Control All and um, I transposed it into several different versions so I didn't get too tired of playing the same key and so people didn't get tired of hearing the same key. But what I would do is I would modify it based on the knees, needs that they would have in the class, so the kind of movement the dancers would do for the, for the ballet class. So the first um, style that I play in is like a gentle 3-4 and the combination uh, or the movement is called plies, which is like just to bend. And so it's kind of slow up and down movement. So I try to have my music match that. So I will play four, four counts of um, four beats. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, to set the tempo. And in this case, for ballet, it's five, six, seven, eight. And then you start on one with the dancers. So for a flowing three, four, I would take my music. I would split each measure into two groups of three. So I'd split into two beats. So it's a 3-4 pattern. I'm not doing like a waltzy. We'll talk about that style later. But for this first um, this first exercise in a 3-4, I'll just pick, you know, a couple of chords. And that's my introduction. That's kind of setting the tempo. It's setting the, the emotion, the movement, and the energy that's needed for these kind of like down and up motion of the dancers. Some teachers may ask for a little bit different energy or a different tempo, or some teachers will place the plies in a 2-4, or you know, or they, they might call it a 4-4. Four, four. But in this case, and especially in the video that I'm referencing, uh, it's in a 3-4, a gentle 3-4. So, said enough, I'll play this introduction. So see how it's really clear where the phrasing is? That's my first group of eight measures. And then also think of like moving down and moving up like with your body. So bum, ba, 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 down and up and down and da, 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 ba, da, ba, ba. And then here's our new phrase. So I'm trying to think in terms of musically moving with what the dancers are doing at the bar. I don't know if that makes sense or not. It's kind of something you have to experience in person um, and to watch um, as well. So if it's something you're interested in, I encourage you to see if you can sit in on a ballet class with a live pianist and see what they're doing. So let's see here. So I know my music will work because it's in um, eight measure phrases because I kind of arranged it ahead of time. See kind of some of the things in the notes I'm doing, spreading out the chords. Um, my style of playing, I don't do a whole lot of frills or a whole lot of runs. Um, but I am trying to keep it flowing and moving. Again, thinking like flowing down, like the bodies are resisting gravity and coming back up in, in the exercise. So I'm trying to put as much movement as possible into my plane. Um, I'm using some of these tense kind of things. Um, yeah, I, I like this overhead shot so you can see kind of what fingerings I'm doing. So let's see here. But again, I'm, I'm, the melody is still there and the chord progression is still following the Pokemon theme.
can hear the really clear phrasing and it's almost i mean if i were to be critical of it it's like almost too clear but i have found it's more helpful to be clear for the dancers and just to like try to sculpt the phrasing as musically as you can while still being really clear about like where the each section is and if you're if you're kind of piano second play and watch the room it's a little bit different because I'm, I'm just playing in my studio to make this video. But if you're the kind of pianist who can watch, you can kind of watch the movement and the energy around the room and try to match your music to that. So, again, that's how I would play the Pokemon for theme, <laughs> theme for piano. Um, and you can watch, watch the video, and that's the first one I do. And you can kind of see how I take that and turn it into a 3-4. Let's see here. I think the next thing I did was a tondu, tondu exercise. And this is, I'm going to count it in like a two, four. And it's kind of bum, ba, da, dun, da, da, dun. So I'll set the tempo again with the four beats, like a five and six and a seven. So I'm kind of doing this stride pattern. Again, this is how I play. I'm also swinging the eighths a little bit. You could play it pretty straight. So again, I'm changing the music a little bit to match. In this case, they're doing tondus, which is kind of like the foot is going out and in and out and in. So I'm trying to match the music to that. I'm not trying to be too heavy. There will be times when I want, will want to play heavier. I'll play more octaves or bigger chords with my hands to make more emphasis in my playing. But for this, you know, they're still kind of warming up their feet, they're warming up their muscles at this point. Um, so I'm, I'm not trying to overwhelm the room with sound. So I've got a few flubs there, especially my octaves there, not being as careful. But the important thing is to keep the steady tempo and keep playing and kind of keep it light. Don't get too heavy. Don't get too much into the key bed. Again, disclaimer, this is how I play and how I would take this theme and match it to the style of uh, movement required for the class. Okay, I think the next thing I played was like a uh, kind of like a light tango. Let's see here. Um, I'm just kind of going through different keys here. So I am sight reading these a little bit. Let's see here. So a tango is a ba dum bum bum ba dum bum bum bum. That kind of energy or that kind of uh, rhythm. I might just for the introduction, I might just like play the first chord. bit messy but it's try I'm trying to emphasize that bum ba bum ba da bum bum ba you know I can also just kind of play around with the chords with that rhythm um So 
changing the energy a little bit. Again, using just the notes I have on the page, but just using it as kind of like a really basic structure for how I'm going to play. And then the style of playing is up to me to match the room. Let's see here. I think the next thing it was kind of like a moving tondu, uh, which is like in a three, four. So it's like, if you're thinking of dun, da, dun, da, 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 legs going out, coming in. So it's a little more accented. I don't want it so waltzy, like it's a, a flowing waltz. Um, but it does need to have like some movement to it. Again, check out the video to get an idea of where I'm coming from. So it's like out and in and and out and in and uh, out and in and uh, da, 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 da 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 So I am kind of like bum 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 bum, and it's really it's hard for me to explain it without like a room full of dancers. But then and then if I was trying to explain it during the class, I'd be interrupting the class. But that's kind of what I'm thinking when I'm playing something like that. Let's see here. Then there were a few accented uh, ones. There were like three accented um, styles that I played in a row. Um, I'm gonna kind of lump them together, but what I will do to make it a little different or to like set it apart so they don't all sound the same is I maybe do a little bit of stop time. That's probably really fast. Um, you can also do like a... So it's like, dun, dun, dun. so it's based on like where their accent is and whatever they're doing with their feet. I'm trying to match that energy by playing a little bit uh, more, you know, like more like in and out and staccato, things like that to kind of drive the energy of, of the room for those accented, um, those accented combinations. So again, there's three kind of like three accented combinations and I try to make each one a little bit different. And that'll be up to more up to like the discretion of the pianist, how they would play that. And also to kind of, if once you work with a teacher, you just kind of like know what they want or how they want you to play. And each teacher will have a little bit different preference. <clears throat> Let's see here. The next thing I believe um, was like a flowing three, four for an adagio. So just like in music, adagio means like smooth and flowing in ballet. The movement is controlled and smooth. So I would play, you know, I play a Pokemon theme. Let's see here, I'm changing the key again. Now we're in E minor. Let's see here, it'd be like, Three, uh, one, two, three, two, two, and again, it's not like a waltz; it's like a flowing. I'm just doing those two chords back to back to back: the E minor and D, the, the minor one, and then the next chord, the closest chord to that.
some ideas like that. There's a few flubs there, but again, the idea is to keep it moving, kind of watch the room, see where they're moving and pausing, um, make it flowing, uh, kind of up to the discretion of the pianist, how they interpret that movement, but generally a good place to come, to start from is just kind of like smooth, flowing. I know it's kind of cliche, but to use those arpeggios. You know, or even you could make it more spacey. You know, I will have teachers ask me, like, can you put more space in it? Can you give more movement based on, like, what they want for, for the room? So some ideas there. Let's see here. Then I did do, like, a grand bat which is just a big beating. So it's, like, these big, I would say, kicks, for lack of a better word. Um, just usually create a, a big march in your plane. Um, lots of octaves, lots of big chords. So I would play it something like this. Really big music is supposed to like get get like movement going in the room, um, yeah. So it's like Grand Ma, just a big march style. I'll just add more notes, add some more depth in my left hand to like drive it. Um, the next style I played was like a waltz turn, and here's where I will try like make it a dancey waltz, a dancey three four. Depending on what style of movement they're doing, I will make it bigger or lighter. Um, if they're doing some like stop and then turn to like where they kind of need to dig it, dig into the ground, I'll try to add more weight, like more earth into my plane, more foundation. If it looks like they're doing some light like movement across the floor or some like point work, I'll try to make it a little lighter. So changing the style based on what I see around the room. Um, again, open to personal interpretation. Some things are, some things get in the way and it's kind of like you can like learn as you watch more combinations, the style of playing that you do that will help the room versus like hinder the room or get in the way. Um, you never want your playing to be so like forceful or impactful that it like, it, it it's, it's a distraction. You want it to work well in like a symbiotic <laughs> a relationship with the rest of the room and the dancers. Um, and that's kind of something you got to pick up just like as you play. Again, this is the way I play for this stuff. Um, some other pianists will play differently. Let's see here. There was like a petit allegro where I did in a 6 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just like light dances or jumps, or excuse me, like, like, like a light jump. from my mistakes. I'm not used to playing this stuff on the keyboard. I have to adjust my playing. But that's how I play like a, like a jumpy kind of like dun, ba, da, da, a little more staccato and light. Not getting too heavy in the left hand. Not giving it too much of that, of that lower bass stuff. Um, and now, okay, so now I'm actually out of the different, <laughs> different keys I played in. And I think in the video, if you watch, like I start going back through older keys, I avoided like the, 
uh, the C sharp minor, or there's some, you know, some of those like G sharp minor keys. I didn't want to sight read through those keys. Um, there was fuetes with these turns, and I played like a, what they call a coda in ballet. Um, all it means is like I use like a one octave umpa in my left hand. Um, let's see, be like bum, bum, bum. I think it's a bit faster than the version I played in the in the in the class this year. It's more like so it's kind of like mpa mpa mpa. It's like that driving kind of like helping turn or like it's the subdivision like helps it move forward but i'm not making it too heavy not too heavy in the left hand there and you have to be careful or i have to be careful with that one like not to let it get too carried away um i think the last style of music i did was a gl- grand allegro so just like rambat ma is like a big beating grand allegro is just a big fast piece um this is usually at the end of the class and it's just a big waltzy three four um let me pick a key that i can i can do c minor um so what I did is take take the music again um, and just made it bigger, like octaves in the left hand. Let's see what I can do. I'm probably going to be a few mistakes here playing on the keyboard. And so it's like the driving towards the downbeat. You know, like bum, ba, ba, bum, ba, ba. Boom, you know, and then again, watching the room, watching the combination, watching the dancers, it's kind of fun. Like when they stop to kind of bring your energy. Uh, let's see here if I can even. You know, like taking a breath and then bum ba when they start to do like a big thing the next time. So I think those are the styles uh, of <laughs> Pokemon theme I did for class. This was a song request years and years ago to like one of the students asked me if I could play Pokemon for class. And then uh, I pulled it out of <laughs> the repertoire again and uh, a, couple of, a couple of kids were like, hey, that was great. And I thought, you know, it really is a fun kind of goofy tune and I thought it'd be a fun challenge to see how many different ways I could play it for the class. I think one of the things I could have done was also play, I didn't mention this, for a Ronde Jean, which is usually a 3-4. I think of it as like a round 3-4. So it's not, it's like, on, on more of a side of like a waltz 3-4, but less less on the side of like an adagio 3-4, if that makes sense. Um, and again, that style of combination will kind of be up to the teacher, the way they set it. Um, it's traditionally in a 3-4. I won't play like a waltzy um pa pa three four like I said, but it'll have like this round kind of sound to it because the movement the dancers are doing are like making circles on their floor on the floor with their with their leg. Um, it's kind of thing you need to see in person to kind of like understand kind of the the sound or what that sounds like. Um, yeah, I, I think one of the things I didn't play was a six four. Um, that would be kind of a challenge. One one and a two and three and four five six one two and three. That's how I would play like a six for something. Like sometimes they'll ask for a polonaise or a mazurka, and it's kind of interchangeable. They more they want that bum ba ba dum bum ba dum 
bum bum ba ba da ba ba bum bum ba six because it's kind of that six feel instead of a three four feel for some combinations. But in general, as a ballet pianist, these are these are kind of the styles you'll need to be able to play in. So I have another video on the channel talking about like how to take a piece of music and modify it for ballet. And really, all I'm doing is making sure I have music that's in phrases of eight measures, and then I can change the um, you know change the tempo or change the uh, the meter to what I need for the class because I know that it it counts to eight in the in the phrasing of the song itself. And then from there, it's just kind of like developing, developing like a little bit of experience to know like what style you need to play for. Do I need to add more notes? Should I add more octaves to make it more emphasized? Should it be light? Are they doing light movement? Um, sometimes some teachers will ask for sustained playing, um, and then I'll use like a chord progression from a song just kind of like playing in the background. It's, it's a certain style of teaching, a certain style of class, but then you could use music that you know is in eight measure phrases um, to play for class, you know. So you can really modify music however you need to make it fit for uh, for the movement of a ballet class. But I hope that kind of helps like a little bit behind the scenes of like what I was thinking of. Just try to make like a fun, different class. And then, uh, <laughs> I couldn't, uh, I, I like had the song in my head for hours afterwards. It was a little, a little stuck in my head. I kind of need to take a break from this song. <laughs> If you're somebody who likes to improvise and to take lead sheets and kind of like add notes or take away notes or change it, um, I encourage you to like check out like how to play for ballet. It's kind of a cool, it's a cool gig. You know, if you like kind of like thinking on your toes and matching the energy of your playing to the energy of a room full of people moving, it's kind of a cool feeling. So any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. A big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for supporting the channel. And uh, I have a bunch of requests I need to get to. So hopefully I'll be having some patron requests this week up on the channel. But anyway, take care and I will catch everyone next time.